You know, I've talked about Gundams, Transformers, and Kaijus, but I only have two videos of Kaijus, but how? How can I spice things up a bit? Wait, I think I figured it out. Gundam is from Japan. Godzilla is from Japan. The first Transformers toys are from Japan. And in Japan, they have anime. And in anime, they have... Anime Girls. How's it going guys? It's Plastic Disaster here and filming this model kit in a weird angle. This is no ordinary anime girl. This is a collaboration of Kotobukiya and DC to make a Wonder Woman model kit. And in case you guys didn't know, I am kind of a Wonder Woman fan. And if you don't know who Wonder Woman is, get out of here. Okay, I'm kidding. I never built a Kotobukiya kit before and I am kind of excited to put this kit together. You guys don't know what Kotobukiya is. It's basically Bandai's rival. They're also known for making robot model kits as well. They also do Freymon's Girls. And I think this is what this kit is kind of based off of. And this is a non-scale model kit. So I guess I have to bring out the ruler to see how tall she is. So going back to review, taking a look at the box art, we see a full body shot of a nice art of Wonder Woman. If you look at this side of the box, we have the front and rear shot of the kit. We have her weapons her action poses, and here is what the kit looks like with all the weapons attached to her. Onto this side of the box, we see that this model kit comes with three different face options and some water slide decals for the eyes. And inside the box, we are greeted with 11 bags of parts and a manual. The instruction manual is a booklet, so I'm only gonna go over the highlights. So here in the cover of the manual, we already see a familiar line art of Wonder Woman. And when you open the first page, we see Wonder Woman and her new action poses. Taking a look at the last page of the manual we already saw a familiar front and rear shot of the kit and a color guide if you're planning on painting it starting off with runner a is going to be the skin tone parts and a b is going to be the gold parts and i think it actually looks better than bandai's gold parts c is going to be the dark red or maroon parts correct me down in the comments below d kind of looks like dark blue with a hint of purple her e is going to be more parts of this color again her f is going to be her hair parts her g is going to be the silver part. Her H is going to be the maroon or dark red parts. And her I is going to be the effect part that goes on the shield. And her W is going to be the skin tone parts. PC, you could say it's basically the skin tone polycap parts. The face option parts. Hand option parts. And yes, it is rubber. The base part. Two bendable wires or the lasso of truth. One long one short and the water slide decals for her eyes i'm not gonna use it i'm just gonna use the face that's already pre-made hey guys editing plastic disaster here forgot to tell you that you also have parts for the tiara and parts for her chest okay so that about wraps up the unboxing i know it looks like a mess but I am going to put this together right now and I'll see you guys right after that. Here is Wonder Woman all put together and great Hera. This is a wonderful build in the engineering. I gotta say, they did some justice on this model kit. Oh my god, Plus Disaster, stop with the bad puns. Just delete your channel already! Never. And you should know Bad Puns is gonna be a running gag in this channel. Going back to the build, I'm surprised the plastic quality on this kit is actually really good. Like, at first, I thought I'm gonna have to be very gentle with it, but it's not as fragile as I thought it would be, but you should still be careful when you're building a model kit. If you guys build like a bunch of real great Gundam kits, you should have no problem putting this one together. Also, for some reason, my copy doesn't have any blank faces to put these water slide decals on. Um, maybe it's just me. I don't know if anyone else has the same problem. And if you guys do, let me know in the comments below. As for the design, I really like how they take the new 52 inspiration and put a little twist on it. So I'm not used to seeing Wonder Woman with short hair. Maybe the design will grow on to me. As for scene lines go, there's one right here on the upper arm. And there's another one going up and down on the thigh. I should really take better care of my nub marks. There's another one on this part of the thigh. And finally on the shin. Overall, the seam lines are really not that noticeable until you look up close to the figure. And so that's about it for the out of box presentation. I'm gonna do some work on the skin. I'll see you guys right after. And after you put the detail work in, Wonder Woman looks even 
better. And all you have to do is just paint the white trims on the legs, the whites on the stars, and little bits of gold. And of course, you do have to panelize because she does have a handful of surface details. Moving on with accessories for hand options, as you can see, she has the closed fist, weapon holding hands, open expressive hands, relaxed open hands, and two pointy finger hands, which is unnecessary, but hey, it's a nice touch. So you do get extra thigh pieces, but you do have an option whether you want with more armor or without armor. So of course I went with more armor. For face options, of course she has the neutral smiling face, another smiling face of her looking to the left, and I guess you could say it's a angry face or an attack face. Swap out the face, you might want to pull the front part of her hair pull this face out and that will allow you to put the other face in. So you have her shield and yes I did paint the gold part and to put on the shield there's this little tab right here and you just insert it into this little slot like so. You also get this effect piece that goes onto the shield and notice how there's these two tabs you just plug it onto this part of the shield well the front parts and that's how it looks. Also I wish the shield could have been a lot bigger one last thing about the shield, you can also switch adaptive piece from this rectangle tab to this little circle tab. And you can still have her use it by taking out this gold piece on her forearm. Basically, you're kind of switching it around. Or you can have the shield stored on the side skirts. Except you have her sword, and yes, I did paint the black and gold on it. Really nice detail on the sword. And if you want to store it, you do get this adaptive piece. Now, the manual tells it to store it like this, but for some odd reason, it falls out but when i do it the other way it's not going anywhere finally you have the lasso of truth now you might be wondering well why you have two of them well i think the shorter one was meant for storage purposes while the longer one is meant for her posing now i just did this in the last minute but let's just hope it'll last for a while now i know i said finally but there is one more accessory or gimmick I want to show you guys and that would be on her gauntlets. You see this silver piece right here? If you pull that out and move it down, it could be like a little wrist blade. Now I don't recall if Wonder Woman ever used this weapon and if you guys know, leave it down in the comments below. And yes, you can recreate that iconic Wonder Woman pose with or without the gold piece on the forearms. Now I know I said that was the last one, but I just need to mention this before editing Plastic Disaster gets mad. So there is an action bait stand. Wonder Woman does stand fine on her own, but it is nice that they gave this to us. For articulation, the head is on a ball joint and the neck piece will allow it to swing forward and backwards. There is a bit of hair movement, but I don't think you would count that. The shoulder is on a ball joint. There is a swinging forward mechanism. The arm can move up that far. This part rotates. You do get a bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow 49 degrees and on the wrist is a little hinge that you can move forward and back and the hand does rotate. Ball joint on the upper torso and for an ab clutch it could swing forward really well. For backwards movement, well you only get a little bit, not too bad. Also this part flaps for the armor separation for the ab crunch. The heads up, that hole is for the stand I showed you guys earlier. The side skirt does rotate just a little bit. But due to design, it does hinder. Down the legs, it could shift down and up just a little bit. You can also extend it a little bit outwards. The leg can move up that far, can move back that far. And as for the splits, well, you don't get a full one. But if you extend it like I showed you earlier, you do get a little bit more, but not a lot. You get a lower thigh swivel. Also, this part of the armor rotates. Double bend at the knee. This part of the leg rotates. Down the feet, it can move back that far and it can move up that far until you can easily pop it off. Swivel on the shin, which is pretty odd. And as for a pivot, you get a really impressive pivot. Overall, the articulation on this kit is really great. You can pull off some sick dynamic poses. For size comparisons, I do have to take out the stand just to make it a little fair. And I did say I have to bring out the ruler to see how tall she is. And it seems like she's just a little bit under six and a half. For those who are not a big fan of the American metric system, that's like a little bit under 165 millimeters. So here is Wonder Woman with a 144 scale RX-72, a Voyager class Optimus Prime, and an Aneka Godzilla. I would throw in a leader class Transformers figure, but that would be a little bit unfair. All right, so that's about it for the size comparisons. Let's move on to my final thoughts. Moving on to my final thoughts, overall, 
I'm so glad I got this kit because I am kind of open to other model kits like how I built Flame Toys and now that I built a Kotobukiya model kit, I gotta say my experience so far was very pleasant. And the fact that this is Wonder Woman, one of my favorite DC superheroes, I just had to get it. Now, I would say pick this up if you're a Wonder Woman fan, but here's the thing, I'm not sure if any fans are into model kit building. Only get this if you have the patience, and if you're willing to put a little effort in it, I say yes, go for it. And if you're an experienced model kit, like say if you build a bunch of real grades like I mentioned earlier, I say pick this one up. And of course, if you do like anime girls, well, you know what to do. Please you start comment down below, yeah, I did forget that the action base stand is adjustable, but I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> Alright, so that about wraps up the review. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing to see more content. And if you have any questions, concerned, comment down below, leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Of course, how can I leave without a very important message? Restore the Snyderverse. Come on, Wonder Bros. Just let a man finish his vision. And while you're at it, release the air cut because David Ayer deserves some love as well.